So glad you tuned in to this show. Guess what you wrote to us? Is it okay for a husband and wife to have separate bank accounts and then for one not to have access to the other? Ooh. Also, what about an emotional affair and is porn okay in marriage? Are you gonna talk Ooh. about that? I am. Oh. I have some strong opinions. Ooh, you better stay tuned. Welcome to Sister to Sister. So, so glad that you joined us today. We are five opinionated women of God, and you send us questions, and we bring our hearts, lay them right on this table, and speak truth to you in all things. You're going to love these questions. Okay, this first one's really good. Oh, my. Is it okay for a husband and wife to have separate bank accounts that the other one has no access to it? I don't know about this. <laughs> Roxy, I... I'm going to say, believe it or not, yes. Ooh. I kind of thought you would say yes. Uh, because you're not hiding. I'm going to put it this way. You're not hiding, but you're guiding. Mm -hmm. All right, so Luke 12 says to be a wise steward over your finances. And if you are married to a spendthrift, <laughs> I think you have an obligation <laughs> to not let them have access to the money to drive you broke or in uh -oh. bankruptcy. So I'm going to say yes if you're hiding but guiding because if that spouse, and I, it's almost every household that I've seen in my 40-some years as a lawyer, there's someone who likes to spend a lot of money out of control. You think they're going to just be limited by a bank account? Yeah. Yeah. Here's a truth. I have a friend who, whose husband spends on golf things okay, on a credit, credit card. card then. On a credit card. And I said to her, well, just take the credit card and keep it in your wallet. She said, he knows the numbers. Too bad, so sad. Well, then change it. I mean, that's an excuse. You become an enabler. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh -oh. That's a whole other show. That's a whole other right. show. Who I'll else, stop. Who else I, has a feeling about I, this? I... I I agree and I disagree with that because I think the two have to become one that there's got to be a merging of it's not um, me but we now in our house we have his money is our money my money is his money but my extra money is my own money <laughs> <laughs> Where's where the disagree comes so, into play obviously I've got this extra she stash and he has an extra stash and it's great to have like your own sense of independence but we merge together. We share visions, dreams, goals, plans, spending, investing, whatever, giving. We share it together. It's not like his thing, my thing. We do our thing together. Well, I'm not saying to hide it from them. You literally you can... said the word hiding. I said, <laughs> I said it's not hiding, it's guiding. Guiding. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> not guiding. What do you think? I think that it is a recipe for a bad marriage when you have separate bank accounts. I think this is an issue you should discuss before you even get married. And I think very few people do. I think you need to really be on the same page about this. And I think you need to combine your bank accounts because I have known couples that are like, oh no, we'll make it work, it's fine. We have our separate bank accounts. Blah, blah, blah. And it mm. is a source of strife yeah. in their marriage. I agree with Amy, it is the two become one and that includes your finances. Right. I'm not saying it's gonna be easy, no. I really don't. Mm -hmm. If one is a spendthrift, that problem is the two becomes Our one problem, problem okay? <laughs> and you need to deal with that together. <laughs> you, need, you need to come up with a budget and in that budgeting, you each, you, dis, you determine, you each get, this is my whatever, allowance mm -hmm. and 
then there's no, Ooh. the other one does not say like what you can spend that on. Ooh, like, allowance. Okay, but it's oh, not, it's yeah. not, okay, that's the wrong term, yeah. whatever. Okay. The, in the budget, <laughs> this budget. is what you your get and this is what budget. you get. This is oh, your budget and this is your budget. And then, to let it them is. have everything you own. It's, but it's I'm not, sorry, you're, you're no. together on that. But they it's know little. you have it, but they don't have access till they learn how to spend that money. Is not their parents. Parents. That is a parent relationship. No, no that's not a parent. Life. That's two helping Ooh. each other, helpmates, helping but each yeah, other. I, if somebody is that wonky, then they need big help. <laughs> no. I mean, that's what I'm saying. That's, that's like why a, that needs to be discussed way before you even get married. Well, because it's too late that's for this, this, too uh, late. this question. <laughs> Their husband knew? and wife. Who knew that this question would be like this? I didn't know. Money, no, it's it's a, a, money it's is the root of all evil, right? No, the, the love, love of money. Of money. The love okay. of money. Okay. All right. I'm moving from the money. Money. <laughs> money is the root of all evil. Okay. This is a good question, oh. though. Love. The but this is not money. love. This is what is the danger of an emotional affair? That's really Ooh. bad. Yeah. Angela, why don't you take this? Get yeah. off money. Get <laughs> <laughs> off money. Because she's like, yeah. an emotional affair with money. Huh? <laughs> That's right. Um, you know, where our heart is, that's what leads our life. It says, out of the heart flow the issues of life. And so if we find our treasure in someone else's words mm. with us in our conversation there, there goes our heart, there mm -hmm. goes our life. And so an emotional affair is really just the opening to everything else, you know? And, and that's why it's so important that we remain filled up in Christ and filled up in our spouse, you know? Cause those can happen pretty effortlessly if you share passions with someone or, mm -hmm. you know, you're in a career and, and you have to build with different people. Um, and so the emotional affair is really, I think that tempting place that can take you longer and leave you there. Down in a bad path. Mm -hmm. Now you work with guys. Yeah. <coughs> well, how do you feel about this emotional affair? Well, I mean, I don't think working with a guy yeah. means no, you're going to have right, an emotional right. affair. You're right, you're right. Okay, okay. <laughs> you know a guy. Oh my gosh! Run! <laughs> That's what I meant. When you work closely with a guy, perhaps I mean, you go down that path Angela just talked perhaps, about. Perhaps, but I think you can work with a guy and not have an emotional yes. affair. Just can FYI. you have a guy as a friend? Sure. Okay, that's a different question. Okay. Emotional <laughs> affairs are just as bad as physical affairs mm, to me. Absolutely. It is an affair. Yeah. An emotional affair is an affair, yeah. okay? And you have to deal with the fallout just as much mm. with an emotional affair mm. as a physical affair. Yeah. You have betrayed your spouse. Mm -hmm. You have, um, and you are going to have to deal with that. You yeah. are going to have to ask forgiveness you are going to have to you know go through counseling you are going to have to break off that relationship mm -hmm. there is no to me there is no differentiation yeah. it's not like I mean yes there there's a, Look, steps yes. and <laughs> there's gonna be things you have to deal with mm -hmm. differently than with a physical but it is still an affair. Mm -hmm. Especially for us women, I think. I looked it up. <laughs> to, I wanted to see what the world had to say about an emotional affair. So an emotional affair is an intense non-sexual connection between two individuals that closely resembles intimacy and emotional bond as in marriage. I mean, can you imagine? So you're spending, yeah. it's that frequent of contact, it's that frequent of sharing, it's that frequency of sharing your thoughts and they understand me. I mean, that is an outright betrayal. So an emo the danger of an emotion, if you need to talk to another man about mm -hmm. deep things of your heart and emotions, yeah. you're in big trouble. Yeah, you're in yes. trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Roxy, do you have something for me? Well, it's, it's simple. First Peter says, if you have cares, if you have emotions, cast them on the Lord yeah. Yeah. first okay, because yeah. he is the one who cares yes. for you. You can't even cast some of this emotionalism on your spouse right. before you go to the Lord mm -hmm. because you're going to screw up your spouse like, oh, what did mm -hmm. I just hit? Mm -hmm. You know, you hit the wall. So the first care is with the Lord. And the second thing about emotions is we're honoring the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, God put this in here to typify what we do spiritually. In the spirit, we have other gods before us. Right. So he's really talking about a spiritual plane that we take to the physical and the emotional. 
where are we spiritually with the Lord before we get into this emotional issue? It, does the other things become an idol in our lives? And that's how it starts. Mm -hmm. Other things become idols in our life because we haven't cast our cares on the Lord. So we go to all these other people and all these other things to find gratification. That's right. Oh boy, I like wow. that. I, I like this next question, kind of. <laughs> that means oh, she you does don't. that. I like it for Amy to answer. <laughs> okay, here's the question. Is it okay to use porn <laughs> to enhance your marriage? Amy. This ticks me off, actually, because it, it sounds so soft. Is it okay mm -hmm. to use porn in our marriage? Enhance. And it, it's going to enhance yeah. our marriage. Not that it's wicked, twisted, and it will destroy your mind. It will destroy yeah. your marriage. It dehumanizes what sex is, what womanhood is, and what manhood is. And not, that's not including the children and the teens that are involved in the pornography industry. Pornography is the third most common form of sex trafficking. Wow. So I think that you better know when you're watching porn, there, there's, a, there's a high probability that that per person is being trafficked and trapped in this pornography that you're enjoying and that you're putting your money towards, so you're supporting this, 35% of all downloads on the internet are porn. That's unbelievable. 35%, guys. Um, mm. <clears throat> Pornhub has 42 billion visits annually. There are 400 million porn searches for youth. <gasps> now, like, to me, if your heart's not dropping, like, we've got... We have been desensitized and we've been That's numbed crazy. down and dumbed down. 4.8 million people are trapped in sexual exploitation. It, this pornography increases child abuse. It increases um, domestic abuse. It demeans women. Now, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children receives 1 million reports each month. So ask me again, should we use porn to enhance our, our marriage? Are you kidding me? It's the last thing you want to do. If you want to destroy other people's lives and your own life, then use porn. But if you want to do it God's way, yeah. there is a way to have a beautiful, rich, yeah. Yeah. sexy, healthy yeah. sex life with two people that are in covenant yeah. before God that yeah. honor each other and honor him and and you can do whatever the heck you want as long as you two are in mutual agreement and that's between you and him. But you don't need an outside source of yes. demonic exploitation to come into your life and into your home and into your marriage. Wow. Amen, wow. sister. Wow. That's good. I, I mean, I literally agree 100% wholeheartedly. There's <laughs> every reason not to and there's no good reason to introduce porn into your relationship. The marriage bed is not defiled. Enjoy each other in every way, but do not introduce outside sources. It also introduces unrealistic body images right. and fantasies into your marriage bed that should not be there. Yes. It introduces right addictions that shouldn't be there. You think it's going to stop yes. with, in, you know, an enhancement to your relationship? That porn is going to move beyond what you yes. share with each other. It's going to move beyond that and be, become an addiction. Yes. Porn is a huge addiction problem, yes. especially with men. Yes. I, I'm not saying it's just with men, but it is a huge problem with our men. And mm. it's... It just, it opens up to mental images that are going to stick. Right. Yes. Seared. Mm -hmm. Seared yes. into the right. brain. That's why young people, when you, when you, when Amy said this, and I don't even like to talk about this. I don't like to talk about soft porn that's on regular television mm -hmm. and that our young people, our teenagers are seeing. But when you said that about searing an image yes. into your mind, it's so true. And I remember I was doing a litter cleanup. My son, I had the Boy Scout, the Cub Scouts or Boy Scouts, and all these little boys were standing around something. They were looking at something, and I'm like, what, 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 what? I run over. And it was a VHS, it was a while ago, of um, gay porn. Okay, so I 
have these horrible thoughts that those little boys had that image burned into them. Yeah. Just like you said, oh my gosh. Cool. Yeah, so you don't, you don't want no. those images no. seared into no. your brain. No. You want the images of you and your spouse right. seared into your brain, right. you know? It's an affair. Yes. yes, you're letting it right in your marriage. Yes. Angela, what do you have? I think they said it all. I mean, keep your mind focused on the good and the pure, on the godly, you know, leads to life. So, scripture. I just want to, yeah, the Psalm 103, he satisf satisfies our soul with good things. Mm -hmm. You know, you're trying to satisfy the flesh in looking at whatever, or whatever we do, not just porn, but anything that we try to fill that does not fill the soul. All I implore people, fill your soul with the richness of the Lord. Go to church, be in his word, fill the soul first, then allow him to satisfy you with his good things. Wow, this was a great question. So thank you for sending it in. And I think you got some great answers from the hearts of the women on the panel. Stay there, we have more Sister to Sister right after this. Wow, such good questions, really good questions, and I appreciate you being here. And this next one, I'm going to go to Angela Madden, who's here with us today. I'm so happy. And this is a good one, because you're young married. Um, what phrase do you believe is the most important for your spouse to hear from you? And what phrase do you need to say more to your pastor husband? Yes. For him, I think it's that I appreciate and see his hard work and I'm so proud of what he's doing. You know, um, I think probably I need to say it more even, you know, because we take for granted all the effort that he's doing day in and day out. And um, I just, I've always been taught since before I got married that men need to be respected and appreciated. So that's what I try to get. So tell him how great and yeah. how much you appreciate. That oh, baby, so you the man. Yeah, you the man, you the man. I love it, I love it. You can you also have? tell him what he does wrong, I think, sometimes. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, all right, okay, speak the truth, I'm up. All right, I don't have any guesswork in this. My husband who never goes to like stores to buy things, you know, he's on, he, the only store he really goes to is food shopping. He bought me this, along with other presents for my birthday. Aww. But it wasn't that he's always thankful for me. <laughs> <laughs> he's teaching me to be always thankful. <laughs> and I took it well because, you know, I speak, I, well. <laughs> I speak the truth in love. And so I expect him to say it back because Aww. the first thing I think of is something negative. All right? Aww. So I know that he wants me as 1 Thessalonians says, be thankful in everything, not for everything, but always be thankful. So I took it real well, sisters. There you go. I, I still it. have the you pillow. Will. I kept the tag on for these last couple years just to remind me that he does shop once in a while with you know these kind of stores. And he happened to see it and it struck him. Oh, I got to get that. And for him to like bring correction, on my birthday, no less. Oh, Alan. Was, it oh was God. good. Alan eight. was good. I appreciate it. I think he's thankful for you. He is. Yes, always yeah. thankful. I'll turn it that way. You Please can turn do. it that way. Please Kathy. do. Who else has something? Okay, what do you say so to your spouse? My husband had dental surgery, and he's coming out of this, like, high dozy place, right? And I'm <laughs> sitting there with him, and he starts, like, crying. I love my kids so much. <laughs> and I love my wife and my children. But sometimes my wife is mean to me. <laughs> he said that in his doozy. In his doozy. <laughs> and, I, and the truth is that I think I do. I get yeah. snippy and snappy and just we're, we're moving at a fast pace and I just will snap. It's hormones. Eat. It's hormones. Eh? It is. Well, <clears throat> whatever it is, it's flesh. Mm -hmm. So I probably should say, I'm sorry more. Will you forgive me? I shouldn't have done that. It was, you know, I, I think we should be kind to each other. I love that. I love that. I think good. saying you're sorry is really good, too. Yeah. Really good. I'm Why are go you doing that? This is true. Oh, right. I'm like getting convictions from all of <laughs> Because literally, I didn't even 
even focus on the part of what I should say to my spouse. The whole, my whole thing was, what does my spouse need to say to me? Yeah. <laughs> That's all I thought about. It might be correction Corey, that's Corey. Well, if the that's shoe all right. fits. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> all right, Corey, I'm going to ask you this question about a deceitful heart then. Okay. Um, it's mm. Jeremiah 17. Oh, nine. yeah, I know this okay. verse way. Well. Do you? Because this is confusing. I, I, I don't literally know it. quote this verse all the time. Well, tell them because the I'm The heart confused. is deceitful above all things. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir, Rebob. Bob. Um, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> or not just Bob. Uh, Bob, <laughs> it's not just you. The generalized. It other. means that your emotions will betray you, my dear Kathy. Oh. Emotional friend. Yeah, I am emotional. Your emotions will betray you. And that's why our wisdom that God gives us mm, will balance those emotions mm -hmm. out. Because mm -hmm. emotions are not good. That's why, like, when you're on your high, when you're singing your worship song, <laughs> and the emotions are there, you cannot ride on those just emotions. Like, you, that's why, like, when you go away from, like, those retreats and those, you know, emotional highs, and you, like, drop from that, like, there, oh, you have yeah. to have something deep than that you have to have the roots mm -hmm. there because th you cannot ride on emotion alone you know you have to have a deep relationship there has to be something deeper there and you will be betrayed by that so we need emotions here's a good verse to balance that oh, out um, Matthew 10 16 be wise as serpents and innocent as doves so you have that balance with the wisdom and the emotion, okay? That's, it's very important because your, your emotions will betray you. It's like when you have the butterflies, when you first have, you know, fall in love or have those relationships. That's you cannot true. just depend on those feelings when you, that you have when you first date somebody. You have to get deeper with them and really find out if there's compatibility, if you have depth there. If everybody married the first person they had butterflies with, there'd be all disastrous relationships. The heart is deceitful above all things. I'll tell you this, Jeremiah, that's a pretty good one. Do you have anything scripture? Well, Jeremiah me? was a prophet. Nobody repented under was, him. A bulldog. <laughs> I was going to say, he was a bulldog. Bullfrog. Bullfrog. Well, before the bullfrog song, Jeremiah was a prophet. Nobody repented. Oh, they that's were why all he was deceitful. So mad. <laughs> well, he was speaking the truth. And it says, too, that there's a way that seems right to a man, but it ends in death. What's that way that seems right? Self gratification. What have we been talking about through all this emotional affairs, pornography, bank accounts, all fleshly things that seem right to us because we are self centered? people. Yes. Now for self-preservation, it's a good thing. But for not caring about somebody else, it's wrong. So Jeremiah says, you're seeking after your own way. You're, you're walking away from God. Your heart is deceiving you to satisfy yourself versus pleasing your God. Oh my gosh. If Amy, you go what into you about any store, you're going to see either earrings or a necklace or a shirt that says, follow your heart. Follow your heart, no, and you're like, don't follow your heart. No, your heart no. can be coo cuckoo. <laughs> you cuckoo for cocoa, but you want to follow the voice of God. You want to yeah. follow the good shepherd. You want to follow the word of God. You do yeah. not want to just follow your heart. That is sad one day, happy one day, mad one day, cold one day, warm one day. Like, yes, no. That's good. Yes. yes. That's good. Well, you know what, this is really good because you're telling me don't be emotional. You're telling me- I know, you can be emotional. emotional. Just don't make all your decisions based on those emotions. Okay, I'll try. Um, <laughs> but I, I love the difference of opinion on all of these questions today, so amazing. And I hope that you got what I got from each of my <laughs> sisters. It's so good. Watch and it again if you didn't. Oh my God. This was a really good show and I'm so grateful that you send us in questions and I'm most grateful that you tune in and take the time to hear what the sisters have to think and say to you each week. We love you so much and we're gonna wrap it up right after this. Wow, I wonder if you're like me. And I mean, it's uncomfortable to talk about some of these things, but 
We have to. If the believers don't talk about these things, if Christians aren't talking about it, if we're not digging into the Word of God to find out what the Word has to say about it, then the world will drive the narrative on all subject matter. So the church, we have to rise up. We have to be bold and very courageous. I mean, as a pastor of 26 years, I know I don't look that old, but I am. So many issues over porn and marriage, it breaks my heart. Human trafficking, just going rampant. There's, there's marriage issues, there's emotional affairs, there's hard things, but guess what? There is hope in God. And let's go to the scripture right now in 2 Corinthians 1, 9. <clears throat> he has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything that we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. This is huge right here. It says, not because of anything we have done. It is not in our own works that we receive the grace of God. It is all because of what Jesus did for us. So put the pressure back on him. And when condemnation in the world is, and sin is trying to point back at you, you messed up, you're an idiot, you had an affair, you, had, you were into porn, just say, I, God, forgive me. I repent of my sin and then turn and stop doing it and start walking with God. Oh my gosh, I love, put the pressure back on him because he cares for you, no anxious thoughts. And this thought is mine, as iron sharpens iron, so does the countenance of a man or a woman or a sister sharpen the other. Roxy, Corey, Angela, Amy, love you all and you too. See you next time.